Hey, Willy Mix for an unbiased review with a bit of comparison of the new Slate FGA API EQ. So first and foremost, yes, it won't sound the same as my API 550A, simply because even 550A sound different depending on the year of manufacturing, but also because Fabrice Gabriel didn't came to my studio and started working on my APA and with my conversion setup. So the calibration will be different. So why comparing? Just because EQs have also a way to handle transients, especially harmonically rich EQs like those APIs, and a good emulation, to me, whenever the curve or the frequency point are roughly there, should also react the same way to transients as hardware. To me, this is even more important than frequency matching. Transients are music and are harder to restore when they are smeared by a processing and you can also get used to that transient smearing and maybe not noticing it after a while, which to me is a problem as a mixing engineer and producer because artists want to work with me because I will care about those details for them, otherwise no point paying me, they just take a DAO, isotope neutron, ozone and bam, it's done. So let's start on guitar first to see how it sounds. Blue is the slate and green is the API EQ. Let's loop a part just to see. First, I would like to point out that I really like the fact that a frequency gain are sweepable by holding command, you can just sweep like this in between the points. Also, I do like the fact that there is more frequency available than on an APA 550A and also there is an extra mid-band, which is super cool. I always wish there is an extra mid-band on my 550A and now there is. Sound-wise, it's really, really close to me. The only difference is in the transient handling and listen, especially here, when the transient are a bit stronger. So it's hard to notice, but they handle transient differently. In my opinion, on a guitar like this, which like, as you can see, isn't really like full of transient and hits, it's fine. It's really fine. It's really good and it's good enough to mix. I'm really happy to of it on a guitar. It's also my API got more bass. It always had that bass boost to it, which is good and which is not present in the plugin, as you can hear here, for instance. The bass is a bit deeper, it's a bit like it got maybe a bit more sub to it, it's hard to say. But uh, yeah, it's a bit different and pushing 200 didn't help. So that's mainly my impression on guitar. Let's see now on a bass. Here the difference is a bit more obvious to me about the bass thing, which is not really a problem because I find a way to compensate for it by using this plugin which is really cool, True Iron, and it's like a transformer emulation, but for whatever it just works here and it helps the bass to be a bit deeper. So let's listen to it. Mm -hmm. 
now it's really really close it's barely noticeable the difference and i'm really satisfied with that sound of using uh, fga with true iron it's really cool now let's see on the drums which is to me where the difference is more obvious so let's listen to it Okay, so you can hear the difference. Bass boost is also here a bit different. So I use DCQ Pro Q2 to barely match the curve. Let's see how it sounds now. It's closer, it's still not the same, but as I said at the beginning of the video, I don't really care if the frequencies are different, because they will be different. They didn't emulate my API 550A, but what bothered me here is how the plugin is handling transients and how the hardware is handling transients in a really different way. So focus really on a transient, mostly the snare. So let's loop a snare hit just to see what I'm talking about here. So call me crazy, but I hear a bit of transient smearing in the plugin. In fact, to me it's the only thing that is different in the plugin compared to the hardware. They really need the saturation of the plugin, like the harmonics that it creates. I mean, it's 90% there, but again, it's maybe different calibration and stuff. They really nail the frequency curve. It's brilliant, really. The frequency curve is amazing on this EQ. Pretty well done. It's fantastic. But they didn't nail to me the uh, transient handling of the hardware. If you listen on headphones, and I will sound even more crazy than previously, but if you listen on headphones, to me, it's like the plugin is a bit around the middle of my nose and sound a bit flatter and the hardware sound a bit under my nose like a bit up front in the middle of my head so let's listen to it to see if you can hear something similar even if it's really weird but i don't think it will translate well on youtube anyway so let's listen to it so uh, to me, it's like the plugin is, has been flattening. Like, it's weird, it's a bit flatter and the hardware is more like up front in the middle, it's a bit more powerful, but it doesn't make any sense, in fact, in the audio to say something like this. To me, I explain it by the way on how the transients are handled. The plugin tend to smear the transients a bit more than the hardware, which give this impression of like it's flatter or it's like the hardware is more upfront, got more forwardness and all that stuff. So it's really obvious to me enough for me to, in a blind test, always know which is which when I compare both side by side. Of course, maybe in a mix, it will be hard to say like, oh, this had been mixed with the plugin and this had been mixed with the hardware because without any comparison points, it's really hard to tell because the plugin is really well done, except on that point to me. But isn't our job as mixing engineer producer to really be picky about those details? I mean, to me, yes, it's my job to be a nerd about that. And that's why I did this comparison. I hope you find it useful. There is another comparison coming on another great product. Hope you will like it too. And don't forget to have fun mixing. They are both great and you can do awesome music with both of them. So enjoy. Bye.